Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got this T5 in. We're going full air suspension on this, using the Lowdown Transport's bag kit, uh, an NF3H, dual compressors, 5 gallon tank. We've already got a little bit ahead of ourselves and started going. We're at Dropworks Customs at the minute because this customer is going for subframe raise and all the arch cutting and going as low as we can sort of get it really. So yeah, we've got a little bit ahead of ourselves without picking up the camera. So we've started on the rear. Done a bit of cutting here for this arm to come up and a notch here for the rear shock absorber to come up. Underneath, cut these bumps up tubes down, ready for the bags to go in. And rerouted the ABS lines. Airlift manifold's been mounted up in the footwell. And that's as far as we've got so far. Hi Jack. Hi. shocks mounted now it's quite simple bank fit into the top place it forward and solo shock absorber Chris Howes, you might remember me from such vans as this one. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the fucking take. So, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you may be eyeing up the idea of air suspension. So, I'm just going to give a quick overrun of the management packages that we use and the one that we're using on here. So, the two offers that we do is LF Performance 3P. 3H. Two differences between these, they use the same controller, they use the same manifold, they use the same wiring loom. 3P is a pressure based system. So on your controller it will tell you the pressures in each bag. You can save your preset drive heights on there, so you just press the button to lift it or drop it. With 3H, you have the addition of height sensors. These go individually on each corner, and with it comes extra wiring loom. So it's a lot more work to put them in. Do you really need it? In my opinion, not very many people do. The main reason is if your weight changes a lot. If you tow, or 
go camping a lot, you know, you, you're throwing loads of stuff in the van, then the next week you're taking it all out and it's empty again. Obviously your rear is gonna change quite a lot. So with the 3P base system, say you have it set to 50 PSI in your rear bags and that's your drive height. If you put a caravan on the back and load it up, then the rear will sit down a bit. For the normal person, this is fine. You just go onto your management and just add an extra 10 PSI into the rear bag. That's fine, it's always worked for me, it's always worked for many other people. But if you'd much rather a fit and forget system, then the 3H additional height sensors will always bring it up to your saved height. So you can load a caravan on the back or trailer, press your button, and it will go up to the level drive height without getting the rear end down. The other options are the amount of compressors you have. Do you really need two compressors? On these, yes, I think so. I've ran with one compressor before in the past and it's, it's no fun really. Um, they run for a much longer amount of time, they get a lot hotter, it wears everything a lot quicker. So you have two compressors, they only run for a minute or so when you air up. So you get the noise for a little bit less time um, and you put less strain on the system. Another option as well is airline size. You either get quarter inch or three eighth inch. This just determines the speed of how everything works when you air up, how quickly it goes. So three eighth will react a lot quicker. And that's it really. So for the majority of people doing one of these, we would probably suggest LF3P, dual compressors, and three eighth inch airline. But for this one, we've gone for three H, 3 8 inch and twin compressors. As you've probably seen, I've just been doing some cutting up in the arches. The notch isn't necessary if you're just doing a normal install. Um, this is for the subframe rays because obviously the gearbox and everything comes up, so the drive shaft position will then go up through the chassis. Um, but, so we've just been doing some cutting up in here. You can't really see much. So we'll just cut here. A little long here. So later on we shall weld all that up. Just thought I'd get the cut and done whilst the struts are out of the way because it makes life a whole lot easier. Just assembling the top mounts. These are T5 ones so we've had to cut this rubber down in about half just on this edge otherwise it rubs on full lock. If you've got T6, <clears throat> don't need to do this because the rubber is slightly thinner anyway. Our bags come with an inbuilt bearing in them. So when you take your struts and everything apart, this metal plate and the bearing, you don't need that, it goes in the bin. All you need to use is the rubber top cup. Also the nylock that comes on here is only to protect the thread during transport, so that can go in the bin. You need to use the original nut that was on your top now. I've already gone ahead and put the leader lines on these, ready to install. Get them on.
just like magic. Here's one we prepared earlier. So, this is the reason we do things at Dropbox Customs, because this raised subframe, as you can see, has all been cut and welded, all to look factory again, rather than just cutting them off and re-welding them. It's all been done on the jig. So this is now ready to be refitted. So Jack's been on with the cutting and welding. So raise this gearbox mount up in here and the notch for the drive shaft to go in. And then the offside engine mount and spaced up the spacer box and the notch is in there for the drive shaft this side. So let's get it on. So it's the end of another day at Dropworks Customs. We're feeling a bit tired now. Got my sombrero on, going for a siesta. See you in the morning. Wanna say a few words for the camera? No, not this time. <laughs>